there's a realization that the way to get the word out is through media. It was the cultural decade, with events and trends creating a social revolution of the new, radical and rebellious. I have a dream Public messages raised social awareness, and movies began to break social taboos, triggering controversy and fascination. What you represent to them is freedom. This was the beginning of the new Hollywood. The whole trick and the secret is of creating a film uh, by literally saying you're doing it. I mean, it's not a matter of asking someone to let you make a movie. We are rooted in the belief that as filmmakers, the work we do has a huge impact on the culture. The new millennium, full of turbulence, social strife, exploration, the acceleration of technology, socioeconomic change will become the backdrop to a new generation of filmmakers. My generation, we come from a different time. We are in an age where there is a lot more diversity, there's a lot more tolerance. We're, we're entering an age where children theoretically have the ability to know more than adults do. I feel like now I have a moral obligation to put a social message in everything. For the first time in over 80 years, the Media Institute for Social Change at USC School of Cinematic Arts formed a unique partnership. Three USC film students were given a rare opportunity to step out of their scholastic setting and work among professionals. When the opportunity presented itself to work on a project making PSAs in partnership with CBS, it was a wonderful project for the Institute and also a terrific opportunity for three of our students to do what they had been learning to do over the past couple of years at USC. The idea was to take some of their best film students and along with us produce PSAs for a nonprofit uh, that they chose uh, on a pro bono basis and to promote social awareness about these particular causes but also to instill in these film students that film can have a real positive difference in the world. And it was about the power of this and how to use it wisely. These people are going to make a difference in film in the world. Well, when USC film folks, Peter Samuelson and Michael Taylor approached me, it was about would we have an interest in supporting an idea of film students producing PSAs uh, for nonprofits, obviously, in our community. Every student at USC in the School of Cinematic Arts is interested in storytelling, but a few of them are particularly interested in how they can incorporate issues of change into the narrative of their films, and we're teaching them how to do that. Film's a time capsule. So easy PSAs, you go back, I mean, to any PSA throughout history, I mean, you look at it, you kind of look at the date, okay, when did, that, when did this PSA produce? Okay, this is what's happening at this time. And that time was 1941. The first campaign was created by the Ad Council, then known as the War Advertising Council, to sell war bonds. It was marketed to focus the country's needs during World War II. Decades later, as various social problems grew in prominence. People stop pollution. People can stop it. Public service announcements will become the driving force to change public attitudes. Topics such as drinking and driving, crime, health and safety, important social issues America was dealing with on the home front. The first PSA that I remember vividly is the this is your brain this is your brain on drugs this is drugs this is your brain on drugs any questions i remember seeing this very very powerful thing when i was you know six years old um and i thought of it when i was making this psa and mcdonald's sponsored this anti-drug campaign that had um, 
all the major cartoon stars at the time in it. You know, kid, you don't look so good. What's this? A joint? They worked this anti-drug message into the narrative of a, you know, of a Saturday morning cartoon. Drugs? Oh, bad news, Michael! I've seen an increased interest among students in using media for social change. If you have a message to send, the most effective way to send it is via the media. And the most effective way to send the message via the media is to incorporate it into entertainment. So support the United Negro College Fund, because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. In the fall of 2012, Michael Taylor approached me and he, he asked me about this opportunity to, to direct a PSA, sort of commercial type of thing. And I'd never done that before. So basically, I, uh, you know, really wanted to continue this sort of expansion of, of internet safety and, and, you know, what dangers are out there. The internet's not written in pencil mark, it's written in ink. There's a line in the social network, uh, David Fincher's film, where Rooney Mara's character said, the internet is forever. And um, that really, I saw that my very first year of grad school, and that really stuck with me. I had this horrible uh, theory that, you know, still could be valid that one day something's gonna like attack the central system and we're all, all these, this world that we know that we put so much of ourselves into is just gonna be destroyed, uh, which could very well happen if we're putting so much into something that's actually not physical and non-existent. 6-7 Sandy Hook School. Caller's indicating she thinks there's someone shooting in the building. Why we make the PSA? We're making PSA to, to impact a particular social issue at a certain particular time. So really, when you're talking about, you know, a mass shooting where something tragic like Sandy Hook happens, um, and it's terrible, and then, but then you have also in Chicago, over 400 people were, people were killed. What are we talking about here? Um, when are we going to talk, we can talk about this situation too, but like, when are we going to talk about this situation? And they're connected, you know? So, I mean, that's why I think this, this whole thing is important, this conversation is important to have, and, you know, that's why we tried to make the PSA. When I was still living in Canada, I served as a reservist in the Army for uh, nine years. And to me, that was very important because I knew a lot of people um, who were in Afghanistan and fought in the war on terror. To me, it was very important that the questions that we had um, regarding this war on terror, whether or not it was moral, whether or not it was just, whether or not it was deserved, um, that that didn't matter once that they got home. The, the most important thing is that once they're home that they don't experience psychological trauma. As a responsible citizen, I feel like I need to put something in there that says something important, otherwise, why am I telling a story? I think that these these messages will speak for themselves. 30 seconds can be a lifetime if it's um, well done, well thought out, and meaningful. I think these 30 seconds are powerful. The 30 second PSA was both a challenging and really interesting way to incorporate a message of change into a very short storyline. We do PSAs for nonprofits on our own. Uh, the fact that these students were involved, through their influence, they were able to procure a, an Academy Award winning actress, Alfre Woodard. Keith David, a, a, another actor, is involved in one of the PSAs. Through the help of Hollywood and the additional crews recruited by CBS2, Professional and volunteers were called in to take part in this historical project and partnership. With donated sets and resources given by the CBS Studio Center, vendors and businesses worked alongside CBS and USC at below cost to help catapult creativity. And overnight, the CBS USC production team was formed. From dedication and a work philosophy, came the symbolic message of what the PSA project represented, a call to action. And action. We were shooting a funeral with Alfred Woodard in 
hopes of kind of speaking to the gang violence among the youth in the community. You think about the scene they were setting up with a uh, a grandmother um, at the funeral of her of her child of a child that she raised herself. It's always a hard image to see. You see a, a coffin, a small coffin, being carried out. What images are going to make the the biggest impact? And are we being honest with you know the the, the story that we're trying to tell? Ryan's story was so strong, so compelling that once you look at you know, what the script was on paper, you knew how powerful that it was going to be. We made sure that that story was conveyed in basically 27 seconds. I sit on a committee at the Academy with Peter Samuelson, and he said to me that he knew this really brilliant young filmmaker who was about to do a PSA, and would I be interested in something like that? And I'm always interested in brilliant young filmmakers. So I said, yeah. You know, he said, oh, you know, I'll have him send you the script, and you can read it. And I said, well, I don't really care what the script is if he's a brilliant young filmmaker. And of course, once I saw Ryan's, what he was proposing, um, I I knew I wanted to be involved. And it was great because she actually like flew in from London the, the night before on set, you know, at 7 a.m. and was ready to go. She actually flew out the next day to go to Toronto to work on the show. So um, the fact she did that was just incredible. I do a lot of advocacy for youth. And so, uh, you know, right now I think everybody's a bit distressed and not knowing what to do as we see this just this, you know, avalanche of, of violence. And then with the, the, the sporadic but really intense mass shootings that happen in, in other parts of our, our cities, everybody, I think, is aware but not knowing which way to turn. And I thought, this is a, this is a perfect thing, what he has thought to do, and especially from the point of view that Ryan is shooting this. I don't know how that boy offended you or why you felt the need to shoot him. I don't know where that kind of hate comes from. That's my grandson, nine years old and a block from home when you let that first shot go and missed. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. We're filming a public service announcement for veterans with PTSD and helping uh, families who have returning veterans. In your mind, um, it, you definitely know how you see it, but then when you get on set, you definitely have to make small little adjustments. Hi. Maury actually had it all. I mean, he had it wired. It was like he had the storyboard, he had his actors already and lined up. It was like he didn't need me at all. So uh, I was, in fact, his PA. I was, I was in charge of wardrobe and props. That's all I did. Mike provided incredible mentorship. It definitely helped me navigate the differences between um, working in student film versus uh, working with the union crew. And there were huge differences. Our very first shot was a VFX shot and it took, I think, over two hours in order to get that done. With the, the mirror scene, I was really trying to show the dichotomy between um, who a person is out of uniform and who they are in uniform and how the two are really inseparable in the person's mind. One of the, the goals that I had was to always make sure the actors were staying present in the present moment, and I gave them the situation, here's what it is, and uh, made sure that they weren't indicating you know, to events of the past or events of the future. That's a, that's a different kind of reality that uh, a PSA does draw attention to, or should. Uh, and uh, people should be mindful of that. 30 seconds was a challenge, but I feel like as soon as you embrace that and you embrace the boundaries of what you're working with, uh, and you start realizing that instead of using those as restraints, you can use them to your advantage, um, that that became extremely helpful. If I could, you know, just show a sliver in time, what would that sliver be? And um, that's what we got out of the PSA.
Help veterans heal. Show them you care. Visit OperationGratitude.com. Right now we're doing a PSA. It's uh, for internet safety, and it's pretty much a, uh, a story that follows a father with his family, and uh, he sees his daughter on his cell phone. And then he looks around and he sees other kids and other people, and projections of what they're looking at on their phone suddenly appear before him. And he realizes that some of the things they're saying online about themselves, social media applications, jazz like that, is rather dangerous. The script he put together was right on. It was clear, but there was there's no words. But it was still clear to me. Working with Marla was in terms of like the producer-director relationship was wonderful because having a producer who can look at it big picture oriented and say, oh, it's, uh, you know, really sort of hone in the environment but also the story is, is, is really important. You have to, to find a way that whoever your audience is is going to latch onto it and go along with the ride. You're, you're not talking about one person that the audience can connect with. You're talking about an issue that you're asking an audience to examine in their own lives. And I think the best way to do that is to show them another person who they may share similar characteristic with. Cut. Cut. You know, I hope like the PSA can just kind of wake them up a bit. You know, you're, you're not going to change everyone. You're not going to change people, stop people from posting about this or posting about that. But you tried and you, you've done what you did. And I think it's a pretty good looking project. I don't think we need to shop for anything else. I think we're good. At the end of it, I, I don't want to, to tell people this is what you have to think. Um, I want to, you know, I, I don't even want to tell them anything. I just want to show them something. And then they can, they can take it for however they want to take it. Post and text responsibly. Talk to your child today. As PSAs continue to bring public awareness to the forefront, the tradition of volunteering free media time and space became vital. The world has changed. The world of information has changed and the way it's delivered is, has changed, but it's, it seems to be all for the better. Powerful images and events continue to mold public opinions, and from it comes a new way of thinking. Combining entertainment and education is what it's all about. Documentary filmmakers for many, many years have been doing this very successfully. But uh, it's more recently, I would say, that we're learning that if you incorporate uh, fact-based information into fictionalized storytelling, it has a greater impact on audiences. It's this tool that can, can really help change the world. This generation is going to take us to that next level. We're entering an age where it's not as difficult to make a movie, make a public service announcement, make a commercial, uh, make any sort of video. And I think that we're, we're entering a very transformative time. The counterculture of the 60s spawned pioneers who transformed film into an art form. And in the process, created a platform. You kind of look at it in terms of like, okay, look at the guys who came before you were able to do, you know, in, in, do the things that they've done. Warner Brothers didn't want me to make them. I mean, they, couldn't, they couldn't care less about this movie. I immediately went into them one day and I said, it's Friday, Tuesday, we're flying to New York and we're gonna shoot some movie, uh, some film for my new movie. I said, what's it about? What's the story? You know, we gotta approve it. I said, well, if you don't wanna make it, I'll pay for it myself. With influential narratives, the characters, stories, and messages, would leave a lasting impression for future generations to come. What if they were going to do the right thing? What if there was no um, uh, uh, network? What if there was no, you know, Godfather? What if there was no, like all these different films that had an impact at that time? It is on us as young filmmakers to take what we learned from them and to push the medium forward. I think we owe that to the people who came before us. The number of causes and the number of issues are 
in, a, in the hundreds. I mean, there's really no end to the number of issues that can be woven into an entertaining story. All you need is the passion, the know-how, and the desire to do it.